Good morning everyone and welcome to today's reflection coming from Killin Parish Mans. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Have you ever heard the phrase so heavenly minded that you're no earthly use? And I suppose what it means is some people can be thinking about spiritual things or heavenly things or the world to come that they, they fail to get on with what is here and now, uh, fail to be practical and to deal with life as it actually is. I like to take these wee phrases and reverse them. Could we also say, whilst there's truth in the first one, could we also say that you could be so earthly minded that you're no heavenly use? In other words, you're so caught up with the concerns of this world that you fail to see you're part of something bigger. And if the Bible is right that God exists and he's revealed himself through the people of Israel and then uh, through Jesus Christ and the, the birth of the church, then God has brought human beings into his purview and in a sense is working in and through them so that we have an identity, we have a destiny, we have a mission, we have a purpose here and now. And that is reinforced and inspired and the framework is God's big picture so that our lives are caught up in something bigger than ourselves. But if we don't get that bigger picture, then we're just mulling around, getting on with the, the things of each day, failing to see that we are different from all the animals in nature. We are made in the image of God and there's a reason for us to be here. At its worst, we could just live life at a sense of killing time until time kills us. Is it a case of getting a creative tension between these things, the earthly and the heavenly? Martin Luther King, great guy, but he talked about the arc of history bending towards justice. In other words, being a Christian, he had this sense of you had creation and then you have consummation at the end and in between the, 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 the God's working out his purpose in nature and working out his purpose in human history, but it's goal directed, God directed towards uh, a fulfillment, a consummation, a bringing together of all things, the establishment of his kingdom. And Martin Luther talked about the work he did for civil rights as the work this day being seen in the light of that day. God's justice being established in its, all its fullness. So that what Martin Luther King was doing in, he would have considered a small way in his earthly life, was part of something bigger than that. And there was a movement, there's a creative tension between the, the now and the then, between the here and the there. And I think that's what the Bible gets at. That in a sense, we are meant to be embodied creatures. This is God's good creation and we have to work for it and within it. But this is not all there is. So that our earthly mission is seen in the light of God's heavenly purpose. And it's trying to get these two things in creative tension. To see the bigger picture is also to have hope not just to be bogged down in all the details of the now. Here are some words by the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul was a practical man. His letters are full of practical advice about how to, to live out and to embody the Christian life. But my goodness, he had a, a strong sense of heaven and of a future and of something bigger than ourselves. In these words, he for me, he brings both of these ideas together in a creative tension. And this is from his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4. Assorted verses. 
For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Remember in Genesis, God says, let there be light and there was light. He brings light out of darkness. And that's the metaphor Paul uses here. That also through the coming of Jesus and the human face of Jesus, we see the divine face, a God of love, a God who cares for you and me and is working his purposes out and has called us to share in that light, to share in that life. But Paul goes on. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. My goodness, that's Paul at his best with these couplets. The... Uh, the two sides of each thing. We're hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. And of course, he's talking about the experience of the early Christians with persecution and life was difficult, but they did an amazing job, but they also realized they were part of something bigger. And Paul goes on to say, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not in what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now Paul is not, and this must be emphasised, Paul is not being so heavenly minded here that he's no earthly use. He was of earthly use. What a ministry he had. What a legacy he left. But what inspired him, what sustained him, what enthused him was his knowledge that the here and now and the practical things he was involved in were part of a bigger picture. And he focused on that to make the most of the work that he was doing here and now. The earthly and the heavenly being brought together in creative tension. And of course, it's Paul's belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and in the future Christian hope of life eternal with God that inspires him and supports him. There is hope for you and me. And I want us to get excited about this dynamic faith that can draw our attention to the need to keep the earthly and the heavenly as part of the same package. And each day realise this is a gift from God. What can we do with it? Now the link that I have given you uh, this week is not for a song. It's actually for a, a panel discussion. And it's chaired by John Cleese of Monty Python fame. And it's entitled, Is There Life After Death? because we're talking about heavenly things here, is the life after death. And it's a panel of neuroscientists, those dealing with the brain, and psychiatrists looking at uh, life after death, um, out of the body experiences, near death experiences. Now it's very long, uh, there's six different experts on it, but even if you listen to the first one, I think you would be, get excited and enthused because it does point us towards the fact there is something else going on here. At the beginning, uh, there's a little technical issue with microphones, but just avoid that, maybe fast forward it, um, or click further along, I mean. Um, even if you listen to the first speaker, it can get quite technical because these people are scientists, but I think there are stories that these scientists are trying to understand what on earth is going on. And for me, it was quite inspiring because here we have people of science who are not necessarily trying to say this proves Christianity or, or religion or anything, but they're just looking at the data. And I'm mindful of Shakespeare, 
who said in one of his quotes from one of, one of his plays, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. And so often today we hear that the world is just materialistic in the sense it's all about matter. There is no spirit, there is no God, there is no afterlife. Just atoms banging about and we're just a fortuitous accident. But the Bible we want to say, no, there's something bigger. There's even something better. So I think you'll find it an interesting uh, thing to watch. Uh, as I say, it's long, but just take bite size, bite sizes at it and see how you get on. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you have an inspired week. May the God of heaven be the God who confronts us and challenges us, but also comforts and sustains us in this earthly life this week. God be with you all. Amen.